Thank you um, really so much. I'm so delighted to be here. Uh, thank you to the organizers. I had received the correspondence about the massacre um, maybe last year for the first time from Hanif, and I was glad to sign the letter calling for accountability. Um, I, like President uh, Eboyo Suji, I don't consider myself either eminent or distinguished. However, I was delighted to be able to lend my voice to the call for accountability for crimes against humanity for the massacre that happened in 1988. And I salute all of you who have stood fast in that endeavor. I also salute the victims. And I'm sorry that as much as I have spent almost all of my professional career, not just at the International Criminal Court, but before, I have to confess I was not aware of the facts of the massacre because it had been hidden so well from the public. And so it's been a real honor to learn about it. I was deeply saddened and moved by the testimonials, and I hope that I can help you in some way with this call for accountability for these terrible crimes. So thank you. So I have been very impressed by all the individuals that I have met thus far. You have wonderful lawyers, advocates, um, standard bearers who are carefully assembling the facts, trying to document the crimes, trying to establish the truth that's what, uh, about what's happened. Um, and I think having read now the reports that have been given to me, as well as the Amnesty International report and some of the other testimonies, these clearly are crimes against humanity under international law. Widespread, systematic, pursuant to a state policy with an attack against a civilian population that included murder, torture, extermination, enforced disappearances, persecution on many grounds, gender, po politics, religion because of the fatwa, and also, of course, other inhumane acts coming from the desecration of the bodies, the failure to provide information to the families, and the continued cover-up and lack of transparency about the crimes. I have no doubt that in what I call an atrocity cascade, this is one of the worst instances of crimes against humanity that we have seen, and it may indeed include pockets of genocidal acts because of the ferocity of the crimes and the groups against the, which they were directed. The massacre happened during a terrible period of history. And I think it may not give you much solace to know that you are not alone in the criminality directed towards you, but in thinking about some of the other examples uh, it may also give you some comfort to know that in some of these cases, there has been successful accountability. So when we think of Latin America, in Argentina, the junta disappeared five to 30,000 political prisoners. There have been trials, they have been labeled crimes against humanity, and there has been a successful effort to combat impunity for those crimes. The Hama massacre in Syria took place in 1982, very similar time period to you. There has been total impunity in that country, but all of a sudden, Switzerland just issued an arrest warrant for Rifat al-Assad, calling for his trial uh, for the Hama massacre of 1982. And again, I don't say that to draw a parallel, but just to show that even when justice is slow, it can work. The Khmer Rouge regime prior to this period executed millions of individuals on political and other grounds, and there was an international tribunal for that as well. Your situation, therefore, is challenging. You have a current regime composed of the very individuals that perpetrated the crimes. And what you're asking for really is to give them more justice than they ever gave 
the victims, because the victims were executed without any kind of process. But calls for accountability like this, I think, can be successful, largely to the extraordinary efforts that you yourselves have made to document and make the evidence clear so that it can be presented. And I applaud your call for a formal commission of inquiry by the United Nations, which could also document the evidence. And then we can look at some of the international and national mechanisms that can be used to uh, bring about this accountability, whether it's universal jurisdiction, warrants at, uh, that are sent out by European countries, whether it's some sort of hybrid international tribunal that one could imagine in the future. Hussein Habre never thought that he would see the inside of a courtroom, and eventually he was successfully prosecuted in Senegal. And there are many other uh, uh, avenues as well. The Iranian government, and I'll just conclude by saying a few words why accountability is so important, not just for justice for all of you because you deserve it, but also because of the generations of Iranians who, consider, who continue to suffer from these crimes. This is a government that's particularly unrepentant, that has doubled down on the commission of atrocities because it has essentially gotten away with them for so long. Um, we see continuous protests in Iran that are met again with rounding up tens of thousands of prisoners as well as executions without due process. And these current protests and executions have been extensively documented, not just by you, but even by the United States in its human rights country reports, where you can read an entire list. It's also been accompanied, as Madam President has said, by a campaign of extraterritorial repression attacking Iranians and their supporters outside Iran, uh, which has even been accompanied with assassination and other acts of crimes. So when I think of what has happened to uh, Iran, which is a beautiful country with a wonderful people, what I would say to you is you deserve justice. You're entitled to justice. And what happened in 1988 should be met both with a search for truth and with firm measures to ensure accountability for the crimes. Thank you so much. Thank you.